Call the meeting to order for the City of Clear Lake Shores City Council regular meeting April 6, 2021 at 6.30. Uh, we do have a quorum this evening with all members present. Item number two, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Texas flag. down on the last two uh, council reports for two of our council members but uh, first to start off with councilwoman Jan Bailey and good way to go with the uh, bears there <laughs> thank you I don't have anything this evening all right thank you miss Bailey councilman uh, councilman Rick Fisher uh, nothing to report at this time all right thank you mr. Fisher councilwoman Christy Lyons I have nothing to report thank you all right, thank you, Ms. Lyons. Councilman Alex Scanlon? I have nothing this evening. Wow, we're on a roll. And uh, thank you, Mr. Scanlon. Councilman Randy Cronister? Congratulations to the Bears for hopping out those Cougars. Yeah, those Cougars. It's, it's nice to lose to the Bears with, a, with their win over the other one. Thank you, Mr. Mr. All right. The only thing I have is a couple uh, items. I uh, hope everybody had a happy Easter. Uh, I heard that the uh, Easter egg went real well. Uh, sunrise service down at uh, Depot Park was hosted by the Civic Club. Um, the only downside that we saw that I heard about was with the Easter egg hunt, either the rabbit left some little poo behind or maybe we might have some issue with some pets um, and people not following our ordinance. So. Just word to the wise that people please note that there's a city ordinance out there and be courteous to pick up after their pets. And uh, we really don't want to put that on our police force to, you know, go after people for <laughs> for letting their pets uh, not be on a leash and, uh, you know, going out in the middle of the park. So please be courteous to pick that up. I appreciate it. Uh, also just wanted to say thanks to everybody that donated to the drive that we've been doing at City Hall. We collected uh, 344 pounds. Myself and Brent took that down to Galveston County um, Food Bank on Monday, yesterday, and uh, it was really good to be able to serve that purpose. So thank you thanks to everybody that, that does give to that. And we want to keep it going. So the challenge to you is keep filling those three boxes and I'll keep taking them up there. So I appreciate that. That's all I have. Uh, next is uh, staff reports. Police Department Chief Keel. Thank you, Mayor, Council members, uh, members in the audience. Uh, I, I'm going to give you the stats for the month of March. Uh, we had 379 traffic contacts, uh, three arrests for DWI. We had 11 narcotics offenses, uh, one burglary of a motor vehicle, uh, which occurred in the Target parking lot. Um, we had three fraud cases, three assaults, two theft cases. Uh, we had 14 arrests. Uh, three of those were the DWI, as I mentioned before. Uh, we worked four motor vehicle accidents, three agency assists, conducted eight residential checks, and 793 business checks. Uh, briefly, uh, I've, I've, been, I've begun to look at our fleet management, our fleet of uh, police vehicles, uh, looking at options for replacement of some of those cars, um, including up to and including a lease program. Um, I'll have more information on that once I meet with some of those vendors. Um, we have, currently we have one 2020 vehicle. We have one 
2018 vehicle. We have one 2015 vehicle, and the rest are 2014s. Uh, they're getting in pretty bad shape, and it, it'll be critical before we know it. I uh, need to get ahead of that, and I'm looking at some options for replacing those uh, at the least cost to the city. So we'll be reporting on that later uh, as I get more information. Uh, any questions? I think we talked uh, before we are looking at also uh, possibly getting uh, Ford Explorers. Yeah, we're going to look at the uh, uh, the lease vendors and see if they can give us a good price on, on leasing those. The only difference at the end of the lease, they go back to them, we get another vehicle. Right. We're, we end up driving newer vehicles and the safety, all the safety programs and the recalls are all taken care of through the lease uh, lease or so um, I think that may be a pretty viable option instead of spending forty thousand for a car and outfitting it and then having to eat it at the end of the at the end of its lifespan so um, uh, I will always look for ways to do that better and, and cheaper and and kind of be a a little bit of a better steward for our money to kind of keep those things updated and in good condition. Yep. And then the only other thing was recommendation is the opportunity to uh, benchmark uh, with any of our local cities. I know Leak City just recently recently bought uh, black Explorers. They changed colors because they're Police Force 1 and 2. Don't know the whys or ifs about that, but uh, maybe just reach out to their assistant chief or police chief and see. Correct. Thanks, Chief. Building official Kevin Harrell. Thank you, Mayor and Council. <coughs> uh, my building report from March 17th to April 6th. Uh, my office has issued 24 permits. 22 of those permits were minor construction. I have issued two demo permits for 419 Oak and 506 Pine. Uh, currently, I have six houses under construction right now. Uh, the unsafe structure is 419 Oak. As I said before, a permit was issued receive a progress report from the homeowner on March 30th. Um, I'm still awaiting the structural engineer report and I'm still re re waiting for a plan with a timeline. New construction, <coughs> commercial, currently Okies, uh, they are remodeling the inside now. If you hadn't noticed, I'm sure the outdoor kitchen is functioning and I'm been serving food for a week and a half now, maybe two weeks. Uh, they're currently remodeling the bar and service area, and they will be remodeling the back portion as well. Galveston, Galveston Bay Brewing Company, uh, I have not heard a word from the architect. I'm assuming they're still working on their drawings. Um, I'm sure a lot of people have known that noticed the new sign above the building pointing directly at it as their new home. Hopefully we'll see those soon. Uh, Marina Bay Harbor, they are currently working on the construction drawings for the convenience store at the point of their, uh, near the channel. Code enforcement cases and waterfront leases, I currently have no code enforcement cases. Uh, I have four cases uh, on waterfront issues that will be coming, will be coming in forward to the council soon for public hearing. I also have about 20 minor uh, violations with numbers, bill, and so on. And that's my report. Do you have any questions? Did, did you actually go visit the site yet? I've actually, are you, I'm assuming you're talking about 419. Four, uh, the firehouse, yes. Uh, yes, I visit the site at least once a week to take pictures and document the ongoing process. So you said he hasn't given you his plan yet within the 10 days to, to tear only, it down? That's correct. The only thing I received is a, is a progress report um, basically going over what, what he's done in that first week since the permit was issued. Um, the, 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 the demo is, is slow going. Um, within the last two weeks, I've seen little to no work being done. Uh, none of the debris has been removed that I can see. What he's removed is basically the burnt part of the third floor and sections of the second floor of the main structure. 
the back structure still remains exactly as it was with the front. You had any conversations with him? Um, I had a, I was going to have a conversation with him the day he brought this report into me, but he ran out the door when I was on the phone. I've been trying to get a hold of him, uh, and I did find out today that prior to a week and a half ago, he was living on Dogwood. Apparently, the people who own the house actually asked him to move. So I don't know where his new residence is. That's all I have. What about information from the demo guy? Do you have his information on his permit? Maybe we <coughs> could call him and say, hey. Uh, no, I have not contacted the contractor. I've gone by the site to hopefully see somebody there, to see somebody working, uh, but I haven't contact called the contractor. Okay. Thanks. And what, what's the timeline for the next step? Is it 30 days that it comes back to council? Well, according to council's decision, when they, when they gave the order, he was supposed to bring me a plan within that first 14 days. And hopefully he hired a, an engineer to look at the structure. Uh, in, his, in his letter, he has stated that he has contacted a structural engineer firm uh, who agreed to inspect the remaining structure and provide a written assessment. But no, no who this is or, who, or when he's going to go by. Um, in his last sentence, which I really don't agree with, he says, we have experienced only slight half-day delay, most of due to rain. Otherwise, work proceeds as six days a week. I've been there almost every day the last two weeks and not seen anything. All right, thank you. If I do not hear from him, him hear from him soon or, or make contact with him or the contractor, I'll probably have to bring him in front of council again for another public hearing. Yeah, just please stick to your time schedule. Of course. Thanks. All right, next is uh, Clear Lake Shores Kima Volunteer Fire Department Chief Rob Sniga. He is absent. And next is Galveston County Health District Amy Weber. He knows how to do it now. <laughs> He's a pro. Good evening, everyone. Um, March, for the month of March, we've ran uh, 81 calls in Kima, uh, eight calls in Clear Lake Shores. Uh, given 10 mutual aids, most of those are to the Stanley on Bay Cliff area and vice versa, they come back to us and that was about five calls. Uh, average response time is still five minutes and nine seconds, so we're holding pretty steady. Um, most of those calls are the police department and, bo and boardwalk. Um, from the time of startup to now, we have done 985 calls in Kima and 90 calls in Clear Lake Shores. Any questions? Awesome, and as always, appreciate everything you all do. Thank you. All right. Next is uh, City Administrator Brent Spear. Good evening again. Um, I'll skip over our coronavirus statistics, but uh, seem to have made that curve and things are flattening out, so that's good, and we're seeing that across the state. On the uh, municipal court front, uh, we will remain virtual uh, in April and also May, and may return to in-person in June. And that is dependent upon the, the judge making that determination on working with the uh, Office of the Court Administration. Um, I anticipate uh, next week talking with EDC about our Texas Parks and Wildlife grant. I've got some information from them. They've completed their transfer of their files to a new server and we'll approach EDC with the moving forward with the engineered plans for that uh, grant um, that is 100% reimbursable on the plan side and is contribution uh, 7525 on the actual project. Uh, Lowell Brown Fishing Pier. That appears later in the agenda. We'll talk about that. Pool plastering continues. If you had an opportunity to walk up here through the fence, it is an active 
kind of construction scene, but uh, I've taken some pictures along the way, but I think the first scratch coat's on it, and uh, they anticipate coming back later this week and starting on tile and coping. So uh, it's quite a process. I've never witnessed that before, and uh, we're still looking at uh, late April for a uh, startup and reopen. Daniel Drawer Avenue, we have uh, Center Point right now is on hold with pole relocation and because of uh, the the deed not saying it's Republic right of way. So I'm working with Lauren, uh, Lauren Smith with Olson and Olson to move forward with that. It was, it was purchased as a public right of way and uh, the city controls that and so we just need to exercise a document allowing them to move their light poles to the edge of that. On the Bir Birch Road Bridge, that is supposed to was supposed to uh, complete last week. Uh, they had some delays, and they also had some conflicts with some utilities. Uh, the last update I had on that project was about three, four weeks ago, and they were supposed to complete next week. However, I called today for an update, and they needed to check with the contractor. Uh, our building official did notify me that a uh, permit was pulled for the utility company, so I imagine they still have some utility conflicts that they're trying to resolve. But I know we're all anxious to get, get across that bridge when the concrete goes in and it looks like he can get across, but we really need to wait until they do open it up. There are things that uh, we can't see um, that need to be addressed. The kayak dock is completed, um, and at the next meeting we anticipate uh, honoring uh, Mr. Dunnigan, who spearheaded that for his Eagle Scout project and the numerous volunteers. Uh, let's see, just so you're aware, uh, the EDC did approve the east parking lot for lighting and uh, that project is moving forward. And we've already talked about Plaza 10. And that's all I have unless you have some questions. Just one question. Did they uh, give you any kind of a estimate about when uh, Birch might be done, the uh, bridge error? Or is it just no, they they had a status update, and I, I contacted my contact with Gal Galveston County. It's their project, and she had to contact the contractor for okay. a, an update. So as soon as I get that, I will uh, get that to our communications person, and we'll get something out on Facebook. Awesome. I've, had, I've had a few calls on, on that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Welcome. Anyone else? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Spear. All right. Item number five, public comments. At this time, any person with city-related business may speak to the city council in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. City council may not deliberate. Comments from the public should be limited to a maximum of three minutes per individual. Would anybody like to come talk? Having none, close item number five. Item number six, old business. Item A, discussion approval for move forward on RFP number 2021-01, Parks, Lowell Brown, Bulkhead, and Fishing Pier. Mr. Spear. Uh, you received a copy of this uh, RFP in your packet. It's numerous pages. Um, however, uh, it's been pared down from a source document. Uh, this is for the removal and replacement of Lowell Brown uh, Park for the bulkhead and the actual fishing pier. And this was a uh, collaborative effort with several other people to get this done, but uh, I think it's a good document. Uh, the major components of this is uh, composite sheet piling, similar to what's at Deep Hole and has withstood the rigors of, the, of that uh, very aggressive corner on the channel and then uh, replacing the pilings with uh, marine gate, excuse me, marine grade lumber and also probably wood deck or we would entertain composite. Uh, given the current uh, current state of lumber costs, uh, costs have shot up tremendously and so composite, uh, even though it's linked to uh, other energy sources, might be a viable option. So uh, I just wanted to bring that back to council as uh, what we we're moving forward. If there were any direct questions, uh, certainly try to answer those. Otherwise, the time frame is uh, laid out on that RFP, and 
and we intend to send that out and uh, get quotes. I need a motion to uh, move mm -hmm. forward on this. All right, I'll make a motion to uh, approve discussion approval to move forward on request for proposal 2021-01, uh, uh, Parks, Lowell Brown, Bulkhead, and Fishing Pier. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Fisher, second by Mr. Conister. Any discussion? Just one question, Brent. That's uh, just with what you know right now from the pricing, what, I know there's always been a big spread in the uh, difference between the cost of using natural wood versus composite. Do you, any idea where that sits right now as far as what the split is? Well, when we had it originally quoted, it was uh, about $45,000 for wood on the, on the bulkhead. However, wood costs have gone up exponentially, almost double. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I went to buy two, two by four by eights and it was $21. I couldn't believe it. So. Uh, there's a lot of lumber in there, and the composite, I think, on the on the same thing, and trying to narrow the scope so that we get everybody to quote the same type of composite mm -hmm. construction, was about double. So it was at 90,000. So I think that gap between timber and composite uh, could be closed up significantly. Mm -hmm. But the advantage to the composite is that it probably will have a lifespan of 50 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, right. And the disadvantage to wood at this point, because they're using new growth wood, is it l instead of lasting 20 years, which I was reading through some notes, as far as five, five years ago, th there was a 20-year life expectancy. Well, now with this new wood and the way that the grow, uh, grow rings are on it and the lack of the really the hardwood part that is durable, uh, you're looking at probably a max of 15 years. So... Uh, I think that Lowell Brown um, on that on that corner, that bulkhead, it, it is a 15-year bulkhead, and it was made with slow grow wood. So I think the composite would certainly uh, last longer and give us better performance. All right. Any, any further discussion? Having none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Having none, motion passes. All right, item number seven, new business, uh, consent agenda items A, B, and C. Does any council member need any of those items pulled? Okay. Having none, does anybody have any opposition to this? Consent agenda A, B, and C. Having none, consent agenda is accepted. Council business discussion and possible action may be taken on the following items. Uh, item A, purchase of golf cart, or S, for the city personnel and or police department. And Brent's going to speak on that matter. Uh, earlier in the year, we uh, brought forth an equipment list and obsolete equipment to be li liquidated. Um, the personal watercraft that have been in inventory with the police department for five years, um, they've been readied and they've been taken to a dealership to be looked at. In the interest of transparency, wanted to bring this forth. Uh, we're looking at trading those with, with a dealership. Uh, possibly, and then trying to, s we were originally looking at trying to source two golf carts for two purposes, but in speaking with uh, Chief Keel, uh, our, our two personal watercraft had very, very low hours, uh, between 30 and 40, 36 and 42 hours each in five years, so that's not very much. And so we had some carrying costs with maintenance. Uh, and so uh, they've been maintained very well. But in thinking about having two carts, we discussed just getting one. And the purpose would be to have a cart that was available during the day for Kevin and I to use because we, we were out and about during Monday through Friday daytime. And the police department would have it available for their use, usually in the evening time when it's cooler, when they're not riding around in their car, or they're participating in an island parade or um, 
you know, something like that. So we thought it was a better use of city funds to move in the direction of one, uh, have minimal customization on it. Um, and the last uh, police cart had a lot of decals and lighting and things. This one I would anticipate would have some lights and minimal decaling, but it would, it would kind of blend in a little more and uh, it'd be utilized by both entities. I think we'd get better bang for the buck. Um, so that's that's what we're looking at and just wanted to make council uh, aware aware of that and as a city asset it, will, it would be purchased it would become another city asset so I would need approval from the city council to move forward in this direction as I described and I'm doing so with TK's involvement as well I need a mo motion for purchasing the golf carts all right, I'll make a motion for the purchase of golf cart carts for the uh, city personnel and or police department. I'll second. All right, motion by Mr. Fish and second by Ms. Bailey. Any discussion? I will, if I can just interject, I'll add a little bit more information because there might be some questions. We've had them... Uh, inspected and, and reviewed by one uh, dealership and we're doing a second one just for competitive bid purposes to make sure that everyone's in the same ballpark so are we are we going to keep the one the one that we currently have or what's the plan with yeah on the uh, the tan cart mm -hmm. it's an electric cart uh, my intent would be to keep that uh, that was originally the ad administrator building right. official cart, okay. and I think that happened right before I came here. And when COVID hit, we didn't want to have both of our public works employees riding around in the same cart, mm -hmm. um, just to prevent any tran transmission of the virus. And if we had uh, one get sick and the other one got sick at the same time, then uh, everything would cease on the public works side for a few weeks. So we did split them up and uh, and use that other cart. Um, similar to turning over a, your 10-year-old car that you babied and took care of and you hand to a 16-year-old and you know, he brushes up against a shrub, <laughs> puts a scratch on it and drives you crazy. Our, our, little, uh, our little tan cart is showing some wear and tear on it, but it's still functional. Uh, we just had it looked at. Uh, batteries are all in good shape, motor switches and, and the controller and all that are fine, but uh, that's where the second cart went. And in the future, I don't think that once the once probably that cart dies, the other one is a gas cart and probably has much more longevity to it, and the new cart we're looking at is also a gas. Uh, I don't anticipate that would be a replaceable item at this point. It filled a need for us. And, uh, for a short period of time, and we'll run it out until it's done. But and the the funds for the PWCs that we're accessing will go back to the police fund. Yeah, after yeah, we go back to the police department. They wouldn't come to the general fund for the city. Only a portion of that would be used for the golf cart purchase, or yes. all of it, and then the remaining portion of it would go back to police. Yes, the remainder would go to the police department. So this car would just be for, I said, for city officials during the day, maybe the police in the uh, evening. Um, it wouldn't be needed for like Jorge and uh, his group to, uh, to. It wouldn't be a work cart. It would just. No, it wouldn't be a work cart. No, okay. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be set up as a work cart. It would be a. It would be a people cart, transport people. And. I didn't realize how much I relied on that cart, and I think Kevin will uh, agree until we didn't have one. And it, it was very uh, convenient to go down there and hop on that and run out to a, a site or to take a, a vendor out to look at something that we're working on, and uh, we lost that opportunity. So, um, And with us being a golf cart community, it's nice to be able to get you all out there on the same level. <laughs> and uh, do that. And then also from the police force standpoint, we were talking about it, and it's just like getting down and talking to the kids at their level too. It allows the police force to be part of it. Chief probably more than anybody else will be driving it, and then his uh, 
um, Corps would still be do driving the vehicles, leading the parades and stuff like that. Speaking of getting down on everyone's level, don't you have some bicycles you can ride? <laughs> you saw what happened when I got on the ladder, so uh, probably ought to stay off a bicycle. So, TK, just from a uh, standpoint for you, what, uh, is there anything particular that y'all would have to do to the car to be able to uh, use it uh, for the police force? Or There's nothing that we have to do. I mean, we would probably put some lights on it. Mm -hmm. uh, just for the the identification of it while we're using it for parades or you know uh, festivals or something downtown okay. um, we don't have to put any police equipment we're not going to police out of it <laughs> uh, we're probably not going to be you know jumping out and arresting people out of it so uh, hopefully it'll just be like a community outreach program and uh, kind of get us back in contact with the citizens Okay. Yeah, I was just curious if there's going to, I know it was mentioned, but I just uh, didn't know if there's going to be any other added expenses onto it, uh, you know, afterward that would uh, that would have to be done for you guys to be able to use it, so. No, I would like a rocket launcher, but. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, we're not going to put anything like that. Let me know if you can get one of those. Up. <laughs> hey, Brent, I got a question for you. How about all the other equipment we talked about? Liquidating. Have you had any luck with that, or this is just the beginning of starting that? This is the this is the beginning of the stuff that I could liquidate right now. Uh, just last week, received the title for the street sweeper. Um, that was quite an ordeal. My plan was to take the titled and untitled vehicles that we could sell as bill of sale and contact a company that would handle the the auctioneering. We we decided kind of set the price for it, and then they have uh, the buyers pay a buyer premium to make their money. So I think that's a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good option. Um, you know, there's somebody, somebody out there that needs parts for, say, that street sweeper, but we didn't have a title to, to liquidate it. So that was uh, two or three trips to the, the county assessor's office, phone calls, uh, forms sent, and I think it two dollar fee sent up to Wichita Falls where they were supposed to generate that and eventually we were successful so but that's that's where we're at you're welcome all right any further discussion I guess one more question you said you were uh, looking at some uh, another place to get a uh, bid on those uh, jet skis yeah, that, as a trade-in value. Okay. So, yeah, that's because yeah, that was yeah, just doing a little personal research. Of the number that yeah you know, they had on here for those two for the number of hours it was on them, along with the trailer, it seemed seemed a little bit on the low side. Yeah, you know, just uh, looking at the data values and that, everything that I came up with. Yeah, yeah, I think it. I think if it was a personal sale, individual to individual, there probably more money to be made. Uh, but there was uh, there's also some repairs and they're just they're age related uh, batteries are bad spark plugs probably need to be changed it could be run with with the current spark plugs and then there were a couple of other things on both of the jet skis that were in the back and I'm not familiar with them but maybe something to do with the flush valve uh, uh, there were there's two on each machine and, and both they all need to be replaced. So the total of those repairs was about $1,200, and that was also factored off of that initial trade-in based on their assessment. So we wanted to take it to another place to get an additional assessment on it. Okay, very good. Thanks. further discussion. <laughs> Every time I ask them one more thing. All right. All in favor, let's see, was to purchase of the golf cart for city personnel and or police department. Uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Having none, motion passes. 
Appreciate everybody coming out, seeing everybody's faces, and the meeting is adjourned at 7.05 p.m.